Hello, hello, testing. Test, test, test. All right, all right, all right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So I fixed my issue with my color picker, which is fantastic. I'm super stoked on that. Um, what's happening? Well, there's so much wrong with this. OK, so I needed to take that extra whatever hour away from this thing just to like see what's wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a paint over. I don't mind the colors so much. I like how muted they are. I like, uh, yeah, I like most of what's going on in terms of color, but there is so much wrong in terms of um, uh, the actual drawing and rendering and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a copy of this garbage, because that's what it is. We're going to paste it. And this is going to be our um, paint over layer. Now, the first things I notice were, um, I mean, the overall shape of her face is just wrong. I think her cheekbones are wide enough, but uh, Obviously, this area is kind of too light, um, like this whole area. Her mouth isn't wide enough. Her eyes are in the wrong place completely. So I'm just going to go in and let's do some lasso action and actually just kind of move a bunch of this crap around um, until we kind of get it a little bit better, a little, like get a little bit better placement with some of this stuff. We'll fix the eye itself because it's um, she's wall-eyed right now. Uh, we're going to do a paint over the mouth. We're going to cut into her jaw. We're going to make it more angular. We're going to skinny up her neck. Um, I don't mind the ear so much. But anyway, so. The question is, what do we want? What do we want to use for the actual brush to make this, some of this stuff happen? I guess we could go in with the palette knife again. I feel like the. Um, I'm not sure if I really dig this brush. Just gonna mess around here for a second and see if I can get something that's a little bit more like oil paint. I don't know if I can. We got so much to fix here, so um, I'm actually gonna stay zoomed out because I don't want to be able to get too close to this. Excuse me. Um, her mouth is also in the wrong place. Let's move that. Let's just take everything. Nope. Actually, maybe it's not even in the wrong place so much as it's just. Uh, if this was Photoshop, I'd be able to do this a lot better. I hate this guy's, uh, his, his accent is so bizarre. Her nose needs to be a lot longer too. All right, screw this. We're going to get in there and we're just going to make a lot of bold marks. Um, like I said, I can eye drop again. So that's freaking awesome. Um, so you know what I'll do? I'll rotate a little bit and we'll start just laying in a bunch of value. No. Um, what I want to do during this pass is just simplify these forms. I got really into rendering. I'm not afraid of actually getting in there and getting some of these values in the right spots. But um, this is, there's just so much wrong here. Uh, and it really bugs the hell out of me. So we're going to cut in 
to a bunch of this stuff and slimmer down and get a little bit more stylized. Um, I'll reset this back again. I just want to make sure I can see what my angles are. Stay with a pretty big palette knife. We'll probably get kind of chunky with some of this stuff. Um, and I'm totally fine with that. Anyway, bold strokes. That's the big key right now. But yeah, I'm just glad I figured out the whole <clears throat> the um, the whole issue with eye dropping. A really simple thing. I just didn't realize it was going to actually become an issue. This is going to be really dark in here. And then uh, let's get some of this value so that we never did touch her her neck and get into this area last time. So we'll go ahead and brighten some of this up and then bring it back down a little bit because it's not actually <clears throat> that bright throughout. It's kind of amazing how this palette knife actually really does behave a lot like a traditional media tool, just in how it drags pigment around. Okay, we'll need to soften up these edges a little bit, whether it's now or soon. Um, all right, I need to sort of back my vision up a little bit and get some of this stuff fixed in a huge way. And I'm okay with going over some of this stuff a little bit. I didn't get the shape of her head right the first time. She's got like a very, like if I was, well, I'll get the chin too, but um, the chin's all jacked up right now. This needs to be just a little bit darker. This whole area, this whole area needs to be better. Let's stay in this kind of bluish arena. Not that dark. Like I want to get her nose to spread out a lot. I went way too f quick with the rendering. I guess I could zoom in a little bit more. Let's get some of this red even brighter. Like this area here is going to end up looking a little bit more saturated right around right around where the core of the shadow would happen. Some of its up reflection, some of its um, just the properties of the skin of the nose. And then we need to get. Uh, 
some of this happening. fix this stuff, right? Like it's pretty bad. So we'll get in there and do that. Let's go ahead and switch back to the flat brush. do the flat brush here. Um, mostly what I'm trying to do is just kind of identify spots of warmth and get some of these values a little bit more in line with what they actually are. I'm not necessarily trying to find the texture of hair. I just want to get this stuff fixed in a big way. <clears throat> I might want to change the background. I'm okay with these colors. Like I said, I, I actually think I, I like the colors quite a bit. Let's get some darkness in here. Some in here as well. So her mouth is still, I feeling, I'm feeling like it's too high or her chin's too long. One of the two is happening here. So. Let's cut into this a little bit. We'll get this uh, imbalance of stuff figured out here in a second, but we'll go ahead and lighten some of this and warm it up. Hey, Flame Ages, thanks. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't even know. I'm fixing a, a, a really bad study thing from my last stream from just an hour ago. I took a break for dinner and discovered that it was garbage. So I'm doing a whole lot of corrective action right now. So this will be a bit of a process, but we'll get somewhere soon. I need to get some of these colors into her f actual face. I wouldn't mind getting some of this red up in her cheek area, even going a little bit warmer with it. Exaggerating some of these colors and values a little bit. And then um, we're going to fix this mouth, but give me a second. Let's go back to the palette knife, shrink that down. Like I know that I need something like this here and here. Gonna try to stylize this a little bit because I'm not, I was getting a little too blendy and I was working, I was just not, I wasn't working. <laughs> I was, uh, none of this was working. So now I'm trying to go through and fix 
a lot of the smoothness that I had going on. Okay, we need to change the color of this whole area a little bit. Hmm. We're gonna take out some of the saturation on this side, I think. Might do a, ch a color adjustment layer to bring everything kind of back in line but we'll see. Yeah, it's way too saturated. I need to get some of this level of saturation in here. <clears throat> uh, I'm actually not using, I don't know if I'm going to go in and add details. I actually had a lot of detail in here, and I'm going in and I'm correcting what was already here, which was this, and it was totally bad. So I'm doing a paint over to get proportions correct, and um, and I actually I don't really want to uh, I don't want to I don't want to get too detailed with anything to tell you the truth. Um, it's not what I'm going after here. So I'm just trying to trying to come up with something that's going to be a little bit more painterly. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> hey Cobble, what's going on? Uh, I am back at trying, well, am I streaming 1080p? Because I think that my, if I'm not mistaken, settings, stream, output. Um, I should be downscaled to 720. Buffer, buffer, buffer. Oh, no, I'm, I've, everything is, everything is, uh, set to kind of the same stuff that it was yesterday. So maybe it's just, uh, this is like peak time. But I am going to be doing, um, I figured out a way to get, excuse me, everything set up so that I can archive these streams. So this is actually a continuation of something I started earlier today. And I'll be able to put it on YouTube. Oh, boy. So you can watch later if you wanted to. I'm sorry that it's buffering. That really sucks. It makes me sad. It makes me super sad. Hmm. How can I make this feel right? So we're right in between this and maybe if we go like this a little bit less saturated and then we'll go up a little bit more
Hey, Olivia Draconia, thanks for the sub. You're not even in the chat room, or maybe you are, who knows. But anyway, I just got a sub alert, or sorry, follow alert. I don't have subs, I can't do that yet. I just got started here. So yeah, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, that's right, we moved her eyes, so we gotta fix some of this action a little bit. Uh, let's see, let's get something that's a little bit more yellow. Is that Hibble 5? Um, no, this is a Paintstorm Studio. It's right there in the, uh, the footer. It's a app for Windows. Okay, this is all too dark right here. And this is also too dark. So I want to lighten this stuff up. Not quite that saturated with red, but definitely something in this arena. Thanks, Gobble. Have a good night. No. Okay. Get some of this eye makeup of hers in here. It's definitely still too saturated down here. Awkward. It doesn't look anything like hair anymore up here. I don't know that it actually did at any point. This area is a little bit wrong. Thanks, Cobble.
want to get some of this sort of value for an up or sorry color for an up reflection here that'll help a little bit I might go in with a different brush here in a second <clears throat> dizzy mouse thanks for the sub or sorry follow same thing for Flame Aegis. Aegis. I haven't watched. Uh... Now I can't. I can't think right now, guys. I'm sorry. I'll pretend I wasn't saying anything. Let's see. Okay. Are we getting better? Like that's where it was. This is where it is now. So I think our proportions are getting better. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to go for photorealism or anything. I don't want to get it. I mean, it doesn't have to match, but it looked so off before. So bad before. Oh, you watch me on DeviantArt. That's awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming over. I'm going to start announcing this stuff on all of my social networks. I'm just getting the tech figured out right now. <clears throat> Today was a big day for getting the tech figured out. My big thing right now is I've been, I want, I know people can't always watch a live stream and I want people to be able to, to watch. So I want to archive this stuff, you know? Um, the problem is like, I want to stream music when I am on Twitch, but I don't want to, I don't want that to be in an archive because it won't be able to go to YouTube. It'll just get silenced and it won't be able to be sort of video on demand here because it'll all that stuff will get silenced. So what I've figured out finally is uh, how to get my software to record a local version with just my mic audio and then ignore the music audio. And, uh, and now that that's all sorted out, I'm ready to kind of get going with uh, announcing a, a proper schedule and stuff. So I'll be doing traditional streams. So drawing, painting, real drawing, real painting with my hands in real life on real medium or real paper um, twice a week. And then probably one digital night a week. But I want to get the, yeah, I want to get a proper schedule down so people can know when to expect to see me. Yeah, I have no idea how the other streamers do it. And a lot of people aren't, you know, streaming art or art making, so it's a little it's a little hard. I mean, I think if you've got a game set up, it's it's pretty easy, not easy, it's not easy. This is not, like, it's so not easy to get this stuff set up. But it's a, it's a lot more straightforward because there's just a lot more, you know, tutorials and stuff out there for it. Um, but for this kind of a setup, it's a little bit weird. And it's mostly just because I want, I want to be able to archive. I want to be able to, for people to look at this stuff later on because a lot of people have been telling me that they, they learn a lot from it. So I don't want to take that away from them. If people are going to get something out of this, I want to make sure it's available. And I don't want to get muted audio and stuff. So anyway, I've got it figured out now, though. I've finally got it all sorted out. I want to pull her ear in. We're going to do some cosmetic surgery. Ready for this? All right, whatever, that's fine. Don't mess with it too much, Mike. You're just moving it around too much.
Oh, thanks, Flame. I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm just learning, you know, I'm learning a lot of stuff myself too, so I, I don't have everything down. It's hard for me to always follow the rules about skin tones and stuff. Um, but, but I'm glad that you're you're getting something out of it. And thanks, Dizzy, I'm, I'm glad you agree. Okay, we'll fix this. I'm totally messing this up, but we'll fix it. <laughs> Don't worry. We're getting a little too muddy. Like, I think that this is just too desaturated right now and also a little too red. I need to stay a little bit more in the, yeah, I need to stay a little bit more in the warmer, not warmer, but yellower arena for values. That'll make this feel a lot more correct. General rules, it's gonna be from your head, it's gonna be yellow to in the paint in the nose, like a red, into sort of a cooler color. Actually not even like that, but like more way more desaturated, but a cooler thirds. So, you know, forehead cheeks, nose, ears, and then chin area. That's generally speaking how you want to break up that head. So I'm trying to make sure I stick to that. So you'll see, I'm not going quite to the extremes obviously, but that's kind of what I'm trying to keep, keep top of mind. Like this is a little too saturated. Okay, we're getting somewhere with this, I would say. Mm. The blue is a little bit because of the light reflection, but also because um, it's kind of the least, yeah, it's it's like the least um, turned up toward the light. On a, on a male, it's usually very blue or very gray because you've got five o'clock shadow. So you're actually gonna see the hair, the shaved hair coming through the skin. So it's just gonna give you a blue cast. Like just go look at any picture of any guy anywhere online and you'll see that immediately. With women, you don't wanna make that so pronounced, but um, usually what it means is in most cases, this this varies based on light situation, but if you've got a warm light coming from above, um, you're gonna end up getting mostly cooler shadows. And that coolness is always gonna be a little bit more bluer tinted because outside the sky is blue. So if you say it's a yellow sun coming down, you've got this big ambient light, which is the sky, that's going to reflect back up into her face or her, his face or whatever. So you'll get a generally a bluish tint to, um, or hue cast to, to some of the shadow areas. In this particular case, the lighting's a little different. Um, you'll notice that I'm getting some warmer um, up or reflected light here. And that's because the light is bouncing down from, a, it's coming from above, it's hitting her chest. So if I look back here, she's all skin, right? So it's hitting her chest and it's reflecting back up. And so this is going to become a much more um, sort of saturated, like dark skin tone. So it'll just feel a little bit warmer. So that's why all along the rims of like the nose and the jaw, and even in the, sh the shadows and the, the brows, um, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get that up reflection of her skin um, because there's no, there's no ambient skylight happening here. So it's just gonna be a little bit more pronounced anyway. It's all physics. It's all kind of crazy. There's so much to consider. It's like you're a human um, renderer. Well, I mean, I'm literally rendering right now, but I mean, 
like a like a 3D renderer. So you have to take you have to do all the physics calculations in your head. Anyway, but that I'm I'm just like me I'm I'm trying to do a better job of like keeping all of that stuff in my head and keeping it mentally mapped and just sort of a part of my consciousness so that when I'm putting color down, I eventually don't have to think about it. I just kind of know, know what the stuff is supposed to be, but that's going to take some time. So it's good that I'm streaming because I actually want to use that as an opportunity to, to kind of vocalize it a little bit more and force it into my brain. So right now, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, just take a look at our, oh, I'm wireless, that's right, I can totally just like move back. Oh, we need to get those lift values more in line with what they are. What brush am I using? Using the flat? All right, so we need some decent highlights here too. I'm going to use the palette knife. Nope, too much. Nope, 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 this is just like oil paint, son of a bitch. And we're going to go with something a little bit lighter here. Because that area is kind of facing up a little bit toward the light in her lips. I'm going to try to get a little bit more warmth in this shadow. Because there's actually some of that coming in. I set a two hour time limit for this stream, so we're about 40 minutes in at this point of corrections. I don't know if I'll use the actual, the whole two hours or not. At some point, you just kind of got to stop anyway, just because otherwise I will definitely noodle this to death. Okay, let's clean up this nose a little bit here. <laughs> I'm starting to learn that a really good point of learning, <laughs> Flame Age just, uh, just said, uh, when I paint, I, don't, I just don't know when to stop. And um, I often also don't know when to stop. I'm starting to realize that the best time for me to stop is when I'm just physically too tired or if I'm just just doing stuff, not with any sort of like real, um, real goal. You know, like if I'm not like, I'm trying to fix this part. If I'm not making those sorts of decisions, then Jesus. Just got a text message. I got the loudest text message everywhere. Um, I'm gonna mute that shit. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah. If I'm not if I'm not like going after a target, then it's time to stop because it means you need to step away. So you can see what it is you're actually trying to accomplish later. That's my new rule anyway. And I find that that always happens at about the two to three hour mark. Sorry, I'm getting getting text messages. 
All right, that nose is feeling a little bit more dimensional now. Ugh, that was a bad stroke. Okay, we gotta fix this part where we cut out our eye and put it back down on the page. I'm trying to kind of emulate a little bit of um, that I would say like the the style that I've started to appropriate. I don't even know if it's appropriation, to tell you the truth. I'm not sure if, if I know of an artist that does it, but I'm sure I didn't make it up. Um, I'm kind of digitally painting here a little bit how I paint in real life. And I'm trying to actually just do that here so I can kind of get it more in my head, just how I paint in normal and how I think about forms and where I've decided to put in highlights and stuff. And it's Paintstorm Studio is really nice because it does feel a lot like traditional media and it behaves a lot like traditional media. So I know that I can kind of replicate a lot of what I'm doing here. I mean, not the eye dropping, that's not possible. I think I want some saturation up in here. I think I want to pull some of this kind of color into here. Yeah. And then we'll go up a little higher. A little higher, a little less saturated. She's feeling a lot better now, I would say. Before, after. I think there's a lot more clarity in the in the overall forms and everything. I think I might want to bring some of this a little bit darker though. He's called Wallop. I'm gonna take a look at this Wallop on DeviantArt. Let's see if I'm already following him or her. Wang Ling. Uh, yeah, I would I would put this up on the stream. But um, I can't because my window capture in this specific version of, of uh, what do you call it, OBS isn't working quite right. Yeah, I would say that he's definitely, his stuff's a lot smoother. Um, he did, I think, he, if I'm not mistaken, oh, I want to say he did a, he recently did a painting in Paintstorm Studio. I wish I could show it to you guys. Anyway, maybe I can. I feel like he did this in Paintstorm Studio. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted now. Anyway, um, I'm looking at this piece. I'll post this in the, the chat. Uh, I think that his attention to the quality of light, like we both have a very similar interest in, in that. So I would definitely agree that there are some similarities. Ah, I'm losing my brush here. Sometimes when I do a lot of tabbing back and forth, Paintstorm gets a little finicky and my brushes don't work. Yeah, uh, I think I think he I think he mostly uses Photoshop. I just I I remember running into an image and then seeing um, on uh, on DeviantArt that he had submitted a Paintstorm Studio image, and I think that that image that I just posted is a Paintstorm Studio image. I I know it's not listed there, but oh, that's right. Still learning how to use DeviantArt. I've been a member on DeviantArt for 12 years, and I've only, <laughs> I've only in the last like four months or whatever started actually posting there. Um, anyway, 
that was uh now I, I just have to know I have to know if I am right in what I remember I'm probably not no see here we go here we go paintstorm studio so I saw this I saw I mean I was already following him but um and then I saw it in uh appear in the paintstorm studio group and it that means that he submitted it there so uh, he that was that was one that he did in paintstorm which is why i think it gets a little painterly it gets a little more painterly um around like just in the background and the edges and stuff because it's this software is really good for that that was too dark and also too desaturated I need to loosen up a little bit, guys. Here we go. Let's make this work. All right, this is not saturated enough in her ear, nor is it light enough. This is a nice, fun little trick. Get that subsurface scattering going and make that tissue in, in someone's ear really feel translucent and transparent. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. Need it to wrap around a little bit. Okay, like that. Um, the main difference between Photoshop and Paintstorm. Um, well, Photoshop is originally designed as a photo manipulation tool. So the fact that you can paint in it is merely a side effect of all the other features that were kind of built into it. And then it started really working well for digital artists. And so um, they started building more features specifically to help digital artists be able to create in it. So Photoshop is way more than you know digital painting. That's for sure. Uh, I've been using Photoshop for the last... Um, 20, is this right, 22 years or so, because I'm old. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's been around for a while, but originally it was really just for for uh, doing photo manipulation stuff, and that's really what it excels at is photo manipulation. Um, Paintstorm, on the other hand, was created by a digital artist and um, he's also a programmer, and he decided to produce a piece of software that was the best of all the painting tools, like all the best features. And he's done a pretty damn good job. Um, and he's constantly putting up, not constantly, but he's often putting up new builds with new features and fixes and stuff. Um, but this is a very fast application. It's way faster than Photoshop when it comes to digital painting. Way, 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 way faster. Um, the brushes are just really amazing and performant, and they're really customizable. Uh, and the work, just uh, the overall workflow features and stuff are are superior. I would say they're because they're geared specifically for digital painting. So I've been really enjoying this app, and it. I don't necessarily want to mimic traditional media, but I, I I would say that the way I layer, or don't layer, I should say, but the way I just build um, form and everything, it's conducive to a an app that simulates digital painting. And I would say, like you know, Painter is an app that's supposed to be really good for digital painting, and it's a really great app. But speed-wise, I mean, I tried out Painter and um, it was just too slow for all the natural media tools. And this app is not. This app is really, really fast. So um, you do have to have Windows. And um, it helps to have a good GPU, because it's all on the GPU. But um, you can get a free trial for <laughs> that lasts for 15 minutes uh, over at paintstormstudio.com.
It's 20 bucks if you decide to buy it. Or it was when I originally bought it. Sorry, I'm just trying to fix this ear because I totally... I had to move it and then I copied it over a number of times and or copied it over itself a number of times and I feel like it just got really messed up. Like, it's really messed up right now. So let me just keep fixing it. Better. Not still not good, but better. I think I'm gonna go this way and then warm it up a little bit, and then we'll go a little bit lighter in value. Think about these planes a little bit more. These little baby planes. Get this highlight up here. Ears are very challenging sometimes. Some of this looks weird when I zoom out too because it's uh, I haven't fixed all of this area around here. So like this needs to be like this and this needs to be darker. This whole area needs to be a little bit lighter. And this needs to come up through. It might be a little dark in here. Yeah, a little bit more like that, right? <clears throat> yeah, Flame, you should buy it. It's 19 bucks. I bought two licenses for like 30 bucks. Um, if you want to try digital painting, just make sure you've got 64-bit Windows system. That is something that somebody made mention of earlier to me. Uh, so make sure you've got that minimum requirement. And... Definitely watch the YouTube videos before you even buy it. Um, there are YouTube videos that the programmer, the creator of it, has put up on YouTube. To give you a sense of some of the workflow stuff. It's definitely it's rough around the edges still, so just be wary of that. Um, but it hasn't really crashed on me very much, and I really appreciate that. I've had a couple of small crashes. I had a crash earlier, but I've also almost only been using it while streaming. So take that, you know, with a grain of salt. Oh. All right. Um, I've changed the shape of her face from what is in the reference a little bit here. I'm probably okay with that like her chin is a it's a lot more narrow and severe and her jaw is also more severe but I don't know that I want to really totally emulate what I see I kind of like the shape of the face that I've created here where are we at with time okay we're about an hour in um, let me just fix this because this is too dark. And I'll just go a little bit darker here. Go 
Get a little bit more on that side too. Hmm. Take some of this and pull it in here. Hey, Master Viking. Hello again. I am fixing a the shitty sketch that I did earlier tonight, a couple hours ago. I walked away from it and discovered how bad it was. So I'm going in and fixing everything. Um, yeah, I'm also trying to use the palette knife tool a little bit more. I really like this tool. I like it in combination with the the basic flat brush that uh, is part of the app. This is getting a little muddy. Oh, good, Dizzy. I'm glad you like um, how she's looking. I mean, she's got a little bit more color in her face, so that's that's helping a little bit. We'll go in and fix the eyes, and we'll we'll liven those up a little bit too. Get the some of the shadows and stuff, and get some of the red. I think will help in the eyes, um, and we'll we'll push some of this shadow underneath her nose a little bit more here. I think, and kind of tuck the lips up a little bit. But I think overall, she's she's looking a lot better. Digital. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm <laughs> digital. I'm not a trader. Uh, I'm. I'm. I do, I'm doing it all. <laughs> um. Just gonna widen up this canvas a little bit. Yeah. Promise. I'm not a trader. I promise. I'm going to take a step away from the computer so I can kind of, you know, see everything better again um, and reply to some friends' text messages. I'm going to save this so it doesn't crash. And, uh, oh. Okay, I'm going to do something. Merge down. No, I did that wrong. I did this wrong. I'm doing this wrong, guys. Copy, paste. Oh, that didn't work either. Shit. Oh, this is going to be messed up. Can I just duplicate the layer? There are some things that are not great. There we go. No scaling. OK, good. Merge down. Layer management is really crappy in this. Uh, I will be the first to say that. Anyway, I'm going to step away here in a second. But first, I just want to show you the difference between one and the other, um, where I started an hour ago and the changes I made. Because a big part of stepping away is being able to identify like what is so abundantly wrong. So I'm going to leave this here. Um, Master Viking, I'm going to give you my two cents on on what it's been like for me to transition to digital painting just as a as a nice new medium for exercises and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a break for a second. Uh, I will I will be right back. Um, I'm not going to put up a be right back mess. Here, I'll do this. <laughs> I'm in a painting program. Isn't that cool? I'm an idiot. Let's do the calligraphy brush. Um, or not. Let's just do a simple ink brush. Yeah, there we go. This is this is great. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. Um, 
I just need to step away and then I'll talk to you about my experience with going from traditional to digital because it's only happened in the last few months. Test, test. Good, 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 good. Back, back. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, this is working a lot better. So I've got an hour left that I'm willing to do this for. I mean, I can get this area fixed a little bit on her. Um, and I probably should. So oh, let's see. Yeah, let's um, let's get some of this. Let's make sure that everything's still going. Everything's still going. Good job, developers of OBS. You guys are killing it. OK. 
Okay, I'm just going to try to get some of these um, subtle forms ugh, in here. I might need to switch my tool to a flat brush. That way I'm not pulling so much paint around. Mouth is dry. That shadow is way too hard right now. All of this is way too hard right now. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Back out. Soften. Um, I need to lighten this whole area up a little bit too. Hey, thanks Master Viking. Are there any Vikings left? I mean, like if you were the only Viking, I guess you'd have to be the Master Viking. So you're like, you'd probably be like both simultaneously the worst Viking and the Master Viking, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Um, I think I'm going to try to pull some of this color into here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, how do you blend the colors? Uh, no, I'm actually not going to blend. I'm not going to do any blending. Um, I think a lot of that's an aesthetic choice and decision that people make. Um, like I said, I, I'm trying to kind of emulate a little bit more of of how I just paint in general. So I don't really get into like smoothing stuff out. That said, it's not that I haven't. Uh, in the first digital painting that I did in PaintStorm, which I'll open up right now for you, Uh, let's see, nope, not the 18th, 8th. So this is the first painting that I did in this app, and I used um, a brush called the Draw Blend Opacity Brush, which is like this really soft, this really soft brush that you can just kind of blend stuff with. And I definitely created a more blended um, glossy look to it, but I'm, I'm personally not very fond of that look. Uh, that was just more of a, an exercise in learning how some of the tools work. Um, so if, you know, in, in a case like this, I'm, I'm actually looking more to retain a lot of the, the structural mark making and brushwork that's kind of embedded in this. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, if I do end up softening anything, it'll happen just naturally with the tool that I'm using. It's kind of like a, a, a blender brush. You know what's really funny, though, is there's actually a blender brush that like in oil painting. So there's this really fantastic, there's a couple different kinds. So like you could, you could say, I'm going to use um, the bristle blender, which gives you a little bit of texture when you're blending. Um, it's really subtle, but it really behaves a lot like a blender in oil paint. Uh, and then you've got traditional like soft blenders, like in Photoshop. It's a little hard to see what I'm, what I'm doing here, but then there's like, blenders that'll pick up color and kind of carry it, and um, blenders that'll really pull color along if you want to, um, along with like wet brushes and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, you have your ability to customize all of that with this. I'm 
pull in some of the eye stuff here. Um, I'm not using a Cintiq. I'm actually using a, a, a Wacom uh, Intuos Pro. It's a medium sized one, so it's about, what, six by eight or something like that, or five by eight. Uh, it's, it just recently got it. I was using an old Intuos 3, which was made in like the, like the year 2000 or something like that. Um, and I was painting with that. I was doing digital painting with that for a while. So this is better. I got a lot more room now. I'm just kind of going in now and actually adding like um, just sort of detailed color choices. Stuff that looks right when I pull away. Let's get some of that highlight from her eye and then pull in some darks. Take good position and kick back, guys. Yeah, that's popping a lot more now. Yeah, at first I definitely found it hard to look at my um, my monitor and draw on the table, and it's only by virtue of practice that I started, you know, kind of figuring out how it how it works. So that's nice, you know, you get used to it after a while. Some people just don't get used to it though. Some people definitely kind of get um, have a hard time adapting. Oh, my nose is itchy. Have a hard time adapting to drawing with a tablet and have to use something like a Cintiq. I had a Cintiq companion for a little while. Um, the, little, the little 13 inch one, when those came out, I was like, that's perfect. You know, it's still not affordable, but uh, it's, it's a lot more affordable than the big full on monitor versions. And I thought it was gonna be awesome, but it turned out it was just really hard to use the UI of a program with it. and. If, I, if a program like this was out for it, it would probably be a little bit easier. But there was also a little bit of lag, and I couldn't get down with that. So the lack of lag in a a proper, like, this Wacom is what I need. I can't, I just can't deal with lag. That's weird, it gave you headaches at first. I've never heard of anyone getting headaches, but I, I mean, everyone reacts differently. This is definitely not a natural setup by any means, you know? That's interesting. Okay, let's get some of this uh, edge and we'll clean up this area a little bit more. Get some more pink underneath her eye. My, my big goal, I would say, is to start f figuring out, you know, how to how to lay down color and um, kind of imply shape and form through, I've been saying this to people as they've been coming into my stream, but just by, by communicating just enough. That's my big thing right now. It's like just learning how to figure out what's just enough because you really don't need to get into all the detail. 
and you can still communicate a lot. And I think it starts getting more interesting personally for me um, when you can have something that's like really abstract, not really, really abstract, but pretty, pretty general. Okay, here's one of those places where I actually might use a blender and I'll probably use the bristle blender because I just want to smooth this out a little bit. Um, yeah, flame. Uh, I think that if you have a proper, you know, like a, a nice size, one of the nice, bigger Cintiqs, I think that they're probably really great. Um, I've been watching lots of reviews on YouTube about some of the Chinese um, off-brand ones, just to see what other, you know, artists think about them. Are they any good? How do they perform? Are there driver issues, et cetera? And people seem to be pretty happy with some of the latest generation ones. So you might want to consider that as well. Um, it's, uh, yeah, because, you know, it's like, it'll be end up being about half the cost. So just look up um, Cintiq Alternative on YouTube. Review, Cintiq Alternative Review. Oh, Pad, that's cool. You got one. Thanks for stopping in, by the way. Um, what size? Uh, what size antique do you have? I'm just kind of curious of what what people are using for their sizes of their tablets. Um, master, yeah. Or you could just save up. You don't have to win the lottery. You could just, you know, save up for a while. They just get cheaper, and you can buy probably buy one used somewhere. I mean, I feel like Wacom tablets and Cintiqs and stuff, their quality is so good. They last for a long time. Oh, Dizzy, dude, I was I was using the smallest Wacom up until a couple, a month ago. I just recently got a, a slightly bigger one. And I think that you can still do good stuff. You just got to get used to it, you know? And I was working on like a stupid resolution monitor, like really high. So it, the mapping was awful. It was, it was very imprecise, I would say. That's fun, okay. 800 euro for the 13 HD. I had the 13 HD, yeah, it was about a thousand. Hey, Suchi. Let me know if it's, uh, you're having everyone, I don't know if anyone's having buffering issues. I'm kind of curious if anyone is. Oh yeah, Imagine Effects magazine. Um, the newest, yeah, the newest Cintiq tablets and stuff, especially that new 13 HD. You can't buy it. It's not a, it, like you. Well, sorry, the Companion you can't get. Um, I think that's right. One of the one of the ones that actually has that runs Windows. You can't buy right now. It's out of stock. But it, it's supposed to be really great. I'm totally messing this part up, aren't I? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dizzy, it's worth getting a bigger one. No buffer today, Sushi, that's good. I like it, I like it. No buffer for flame either. Good, 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 good. We were having some buffering issues last night with my stream. Um, some people were experiencing really bad buffer, so I'm glad that it's not the case tonight. And I'm glad that I can eye drop because about two hours ago I couldn't eye drop 
in this app because I was capturing from OpenGL driver. Uh, hmm. Excuse me. It's Gabe here. Oh, my friend, my online friend Gabe just a sub uh, just started following me on here. Just curious if he was in the curious if he was in the chat. Uh -uh. Oh man, I would. I want to. You know what? I really want to work on like a 24 inch HD. I just want to see what it feels like. I have a lot of friends that are in comics and other professional art related indus industries, and they swear by the the 24 inch. I'm just kind of noodling now. Okay, what do I want to fix? I want to fix her lips. I think I want to fix her lips. What are we at with time? 38 minutes left. 38 minutes left. Um, I could fix a little bit of this too. Yeah, you guys are talking about having space to move your pen. I feel like that's the first, for me, that's the first improvement I noticed when I upgraded my Wacom tablet was just having the ability to kind of move my arm around a lot more. Like I didn't, I, I wasn't getting as many hand cramps. Um, it was way more ideal. So props for upgrades. Oh, cool, Pad. That, that's awesome that you're a tattoo artist. I've got a few friends that are tattoo artists spread about the nation. All right. Um, Lips, that's what I was talking about before, wasn't it? Yep, let's do that. No.
Hey Gabe, just saying hello. I see you in there. Thanks for the follow. Okay, let's pull this shadow up a little bit, and then um, we'll try to smooth out some of this area a little bit. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate appreciate the musical likening. Hmm. I want to paint for real. That's what I want to do right now. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Master Viking, that sucks. Sorry to hear that yeah. your cycle accident made it not possible for you to do the tattoo work anymore. That's bad. Hmm. All right, we need to darken this a little bit, and then this area will start feeling a little bit more settled, I think. Pad killer, thanks for the follow. Train wreck. This will feel cool when I put that there, and then when I get this little highlight in here. Um, lips, 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 let's fix them. I think I want something a little bit more creamy. This needs to push back a little bit, so we need to desaturate. And lower the value. And get a little bit of a shadow. Make sure we keep it warm enough. 
and then we're going to pull it over to the same over here. And I'm going to make an awkward position in my chair. And then we're going to smooth out a little bit of this. And then we'll get a little bit of this rim shadow, which is a core shadow. A little bit of one. And then get this palette knife out. Okay, and then we need to get this to be a little bit darker. And lighten up this area. Lighten it, redden it. DiBiase, Ted DiBiase. Who here even knows who Ted DiBiase is? Bye, Flame. Thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate see, uh, you're, you're watching my thing do this stuff. <laughs> I can't talk right now. This gap is a little bit much. All right, earlier I was talking about how to know when to stop. I'm getting to that point where I'm just kind of, I don't have any focus, like I don't have a clear goal for what I'm trying to do. And so that's usually what that means. Um, maybe I could stand up for a second and at least, you know, give it a give it a look after uh, getting away from it for a minute. Just make sure that there's nothing that I'm super upset with. But I don't want to I don't want to overdo this cuz I'm a, I'm getting to that point now where I'm like going to over start overdoing some stuff. I can I can see it happening already. But I do want to get some highlights in there, so maybe this is a good time to back off and give it a minute. Give it a little soak. I just don't like the fact that that's so desaturated now. Too saturated. I need an HSB slider. Mm, I'm messing that up. F me. Whoa. I started doing this last time, like in the last session, I was, I got into this chin area and I just couldn't, I couldn't get happy with um, where my values were. 
So let's try to do something that's at least a little bit, um, a little bit more intentional. And then we'll back this up a little bit more. Mm, I am totally blowing this. Um, Paintstorm is, is new. Uh, it's so funny. I have to, I'm not like, I appreciate your question. I just, I've, I've had to answer that so much in the last couple of days. Um, Paintstorm is very new. It's really great. It is developed by a digital painter and um, has all the best things of all the digital painting apps. Um, it's still new, so it's still a little buggy. Um, I also, I started out doing Photoshop so uh, just because I, I know Photoshop so well. So um, this uses a lot of like the keyboard commands and things like that. And so it was really familiar. And some of the general ideas are very familiar. The brush system is totally different. I think it might be very similar to Paint, Paint Tool Sci. Um, I haven't used that app, so I can't really say. But um, hey, Dizzy, thanks for uh, coming in. Have a great, great rest of your evening. Hope to see you again on a future stream. Um, anyway, I'm right now. I'm I'm trying to focus on like learning Paintstorm in terms of what its brushes can do and everything, because I think it it's going to be a lot more um, suitable toward my style, my my approach to painting. Um, Anyway, yeah, I, li I like it a lot, and it's it's been pretty damn stable, so that's a huge plus for me, too. Hmm, okay. Nope. This is too dark. Tell you, lips are really not the easiest thing. Yeah, it's a little better. I could lighten up some of the shadow in here too. Just warm it up. Get some of that reflected light off of uh, off the underside of the chin, and then we'll go in and fix this. Wah, zoomy. Right now, I'm struggling a little bit with the tools, so it's not a whole lot of fun. That's a little, little hard. I mean, I know what I need to do here. It's just basically lighten up some of this area below the chin so it's not such a ridiculous step. Because that rarely ever happens, even with such a strong light source.
That looks weird. Bye, Dizzy. Um, how much time do I got left? 17 minutes? All right, I'm going to stand up for a second, get a look at something else. And, um, oh, I got to put the highlights in her neck area. I think that's going to help a lot. We'll be right back. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hipple, you don't, you hope she doesn't have highlights in her hair area? I mean, you don't want me to, you don't want me to brighten that up. Yeah, I was gonna push. Uh, I was gonna push the highlights. Usually, if I if I am being coherent and um, have a, a decent game plan with what it is I'm trying to do, I usually save the brighter highlights, or I try to save the brighter highlights for last because that's when all the good stuff happens. So yeah, I'm probably going to go in and push those values up a little bit to distinguish her hair. And also the same thing in the forehead. Hey, you guys can backseat paint. I don't care. I don't have to listen to you, right? <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate hearing what you guys are seeing. Um, it helps me, believe it or not. Doesn't mean I will agree all the time, but it's not going to hurt. It's just practice. That looks a little weird. I don't care. That's fine. I'm not focusing on that area. Um, most of my paintings are very low saturation because I'm really attracted to low chroma stuff right now. Uh, okay, let's, one second, I just want to make sure I figure out what my brightest brights are going to be. I don't want this to get quite up there, but I want it to be pretty bright. 
um, I tend to gravitate toward the low chroma stuff. Um, it's just an aesthetic thing that I'm into right now. I mean, I don't know if I did this in this stream or a previous stream, but my last, my first and last most recent painting series, uh, like traditional painting series was very high chroma, very, very high chroma. Um, and I've been trying to pull it back a little bit. So I don't like this. Sorry, I'm just softening some of these edges so that they don't seem so harsh. Need that hair to hairline to get pushed back a little bit. Um, Hippo, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, which which uh, Instagram paintings or which Instagram work? I don't know. I mean, you don't have to. It's not that, that huge a deal. Uh, we'll just say I bounce back and forth. Uh, I'm trying to consciously push toward lower saturation stuff, maybe with the intention of eventually introducing like a high key or not high key, but a a, a high one color that's like high chroma, um, just to give it an accent color. But yeah, I generally, I, I would, I feel like this is actually too saturated overall. Like I prefer something like this on the left, um, just with moments of saturatedness. This is too lifelike. If I were to do a color adjustment layer and stuff on this, I'd pull this way down in saturation. Um, yeah, I like portraits. Uh, that's just something I gravitate toward, something I've been doing or have gravitated toward for for most of the time that I've been drawing. So that would be about since uh, sixth or seventh grade. I'm no longer in grade school, so that was a long time ago. Can I get a little bit more? Since this area is a little bit pushed up toward the light, I've got to get more highlight in here. Yeah, if no one's seen my Instagram stream, uh, it's all portraits, basically. I can draw other stuff. I just, uh, or paint or whatever other stuff. I uh, I just like the challenge of portraiture. It's like this never ending challenge to do something that just feels structurally correct and has some sense of emotion maybe. I don't know. Richard, that link may not work. Oh. I got it. That was the beginning of that series that I just posted. That was the first study that I did for that series. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I hadn't even started painting yet. So that, like, I didn't know I wanted to paint 
first of all. So I was just kind of exploring um, the subject matter. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, GM Hannibal. Uh, oh, thanks. I'm glad you think the portraits have character. I'm never really sure if they have character or not. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm not. I'm usually not. I'm just not. It's hard to, to see them after you work on them for so long, whether or not they actually feel lifelike at all, or whether or not they take on a character or personality of their own. Um, Hipple, I'm glad you like my work. Thank you so much. Um, it would be nice to see more color. Yeah, I, I think that eventually I will get into, you know, more color. I think right now I'm just, per, like myself, I'm just most interested in um, low chroma, uh, high contrast, strong light sources, um, mostly concerned with and interested in form. Just formal aspects. Hmm. Um. No worries. I, I turned off linking just because I already in the like the second stream I did I got some spammers coming through. Um, I think my links work. God, I hope my links work. The summoning. Uh, oh, in case I don't even know how to do stuff in Windows anymore. Never mind. Um, this is going to make no sense for any video on demand stream watchers, but whatever. Uh, I'm really into the graphic nature of that kind of work. Um, if you could see like my inspiration folder and stuff, I've actually got a lot of stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm really into the idea of, again, using a single really high chroma color uh, in, in a composition. Um, so I'm considering trying to push that idea a little bit in some future stuff, but I got to figure out how I want to make that work. <clears throat> I just heard a noise. What was that noise? Five minutes. Is my s music stream about to run out? I think it is. Soft focus radio. Yeah, I've got about two minutes. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I think that, you know, overall, um, this was a f fun session. There's a little bit of a weird thing happening up here. Everyone's saying goodbye right now. Yeah, we'll just push that back. It looks a little strange just because her eye makeup, because I even included her eye makeup. Anyway, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where this landed. Um, just as a reference, we started with save. We started with that and then took it into something a little bit fuller. So um, I corrected a lot of the shape and form of the face and then um, moved the eyes around so that they were in a better position. Everything was kind of scrunched in the middle of her skull, which didn't make a lot of sense. So I pulled her out and opened her up a lot and then gave her forehead a lot more room and stuff. But this is why I didn't stop with this. I think a big part of things for me right now is actually making things work. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's where we landed. Just got to follow Mr. Creep, um, who's not in the chat. But anyway, thanks for the follow. Uh, 
I'm going to sign off. Um, Richard, it's nice seeing you in here. I really appreciate you coming by. Um, and Hipple, thanks for the interaction. Um, I'm going to definitely take your, your point about introducing more color into consideration as I start hopefully preparing for a new series here. I think I have an idea of what I want to do, but we'll, we'll see how it pans out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop, but thanks guys for watching. Um, I'll be back this weekend on Saturday, probably about 11 a.m. Um, Pacific time. 11 or 12, I'll post on the social networks. And I'm going to stop that music. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a good night. I'll talk to you soon.